Enterprise that we have realized uh, from various research that our research recommendations are not being used. Whether they are single studies or multiple studies, the targeted users are not using the evidence to inform programming, to inform practice, to inform policy. And therefore, for the last four years, at the Knowledge Management Office uh, that was established by the Board of Directors at the Kenya Medical Research Institute, we have been pushing, uh, deliberately pushing for the use of, um, for the use of, sorry, sorry, for the use of evidence among targeted users. So that is a brief history. And behind me, um, uh, behind this team at Cambria, the Knowledge Management Office, we have a whole set of experts. We are led by Professor Orwa, Jennifer Orwa, our team lead, and there are many others. Um, and some of them are already in this set. So this team um, also represents what we call Cochrane Kenya as part of the Cochrane uh, reach in the Eastern, uh, we call it the Indian Ocean side uh, because there's this Cochrane South Africa, Cochrane, uh, the Eastern uh, Africa that involves Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Ethiopia, Somali, all the way to the DRC, and then West Africa have theirs also. So therefore, part of my presentation will be brought, uh, will be coming through uh, Cochrane, Kenya. That is my introduction. Now let's get to the stuff. I can see more and more uh, responses are coming in. I'm going to give only three minutes and as I just to allow the final uh, responses coming, but I want to ask two, three, five people to tell us their experience with research. It starts with you. Hello, Uchechi Anu Anaduka from Nigeria. Hello, tell us about your research experience in one minute. <laughs> Okay, we can't hear you. Let me try somebody else. Irene Nyunzu Edward from Tanzania. Good morning. In one. Oh, hello. Sorry, I couldn't unmute myself before. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm Uchechi Anadwaka. Um, so my research experience spans a decade. I'm an economist by training. And so I do more of quantitative research and my research interests are on maternal and child health and also child protection. Um, so I've written um, several papers um, but mostly using quantitative studies, um, secondary data, and also some um, primary um, research as well. Never done a systematic review before, um, but currently working on one, and that's my um, reason for joining this workshop. Thank you. Sorry, can't hear you. You are in mute. All oh, right, can I hear from Eileen Nyuzu Edward from Tanzania? In one minute, what is your experience? Eileen? Okay. All right. Let me go to the Sudan, Khartoum. Uh, I see Dr. Saha Saifalain Asaid Hemed. I hope I've got it. Lecturer on public health at the University of Khartoum. 
Good morning. Yes. Very good, Doc. Go ahead, Dr. Tari. Uh, good morning, Doc. Um, my experience is not that big in research. We focus on the script for study, my country. Uh, we don't go to clinical trials or other kind of study. Uh, we don't uh, get involved in systematic review before, ever, never. This is the first time to do that. Uh, as a supervisor, as a student, uh, now I'm doing my PhD in another, in the neuroscience, and uh, it's a systematic review for uh, movement disorder. And part of uh, my research or other research is clinical trials for other things. So this is my experience in research. Thank you so much. Fortune, from the participants at the IDI Makerere, get me any tool to give us the experience, any tool. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, I was unable to mute. It's Irene here. Go ahead. One minute. Okay. okay. So for me, I can say my experience. I don't have uh, like much experience on systematic review, but I have experience in conducting research. And currently, I'm working on my master's dissertation on which I used cross-sectional studies, but also I'm just uh, working on the systematic re rapid review that uh, you want to do. And that was the reason for me, I've uh, been for this uh, opportunity. Over to you. Thank you so much. A new word you have used there, rapid reviews. Very good. And those big words, systematic reviews, rapid reviews, scoping reviews, we will discuss them uh immediately after this session one this session one is a foundation now let me be fair to the people uh, who are who are physically present um fortune uh, pick any two and give them 30 seconds each of them to tell us their experience any two from idi physically present at uh, the, uh, the idi room Or we can't hear them. Is it okay? Okay, it's okay. All right, I can see you. Good. I was saying that I'm right now working on my first uh, systematic review paper, uh, which is about uh, exploring the use of uh, Markov processes on uh, modeling genetic diseases with mutations yeah that, that's my experience it's my first paper about it thank you somebody else all oh, right Oh no, right. Okay, I'm going to use your body to clean the thing. Can we? Okay, can we mute? Can we mute some people? I will. I will not mute to your baby. Okay, thank you. See you, see you, see you, bro. And uh, my topic is is much reviews and library and libraries. So and okay, they have gone out. Okay, oh, very well. So welcome to this foundation. This is purely a foundation. For this one hour, we are going to just lay foundation. For the, it's real foundation for anybody who is undertaking 
postgraduate studies, so your master's and PhD, and probably in practice. I've seen, I've seen in the registration form, there are people who are also in the private sector. So introduction to research and research methods for really for critical thinking. This is for purely for critical thinking, and that is the angle that I will come in from, critical thinking. Okay, before we go into the introductions, we have just done a quiz, uh, a simple quiz just to engage us uh, to know where we are. 485 are the people who have responded to this quiz. And the first question is, have you ever carried out or involved in research-oriented study? Well, you can see there is 86.4% have said yes. That means over a significant proportion of uh, participants today have, have an engagement in conducting research. And that is interesting. But we cannot forget the 13.6% who have not undergone through this exercise. So I'm going to ask you to please bear with us as we step one step back to introduce what is research and research uh, uh, research and what is research, and then I introduce you to critical thinking. All right. So please bear at the back of our mind when if you have if you are new to this. Now here are the study designs for those that have been involved cross-sectional, quantitative, qualitative, RCT, quanti, cross-section, wow, RCT. That is interesting. Um, not applicable, retrospective case studies, they are coming in. Um, experimental, cross-sectional, longitudinal. This is a whole mixture of uh, study designs. And that tells me there is a good grasp of the types of uh, research uh, applied. And I'm happy, I'm more than happy to note, to take note that mixed methods or quantitative and qualitative uh, methods have been used by quite a number of uh, students. We will talk about them. All right, phenomenological case studies, very interesting. Um, they have been listed, there are quite a number there, but uh, we'll come to them now. Which of the following is not an important feature item when conducting critical appraisal? Um, the, word, the key word there is not. Which of the following is not an important feature? And therefore we have populations, interventions, rich research study designs, size of the sample or, and data limitations. Wow. The key word is which of the following is not an important feature or item when conducting a critical appraisal of literature. All right, we will we'll be coming to that uh, later on, but it's interesting to say that um, data limitation uh, seems to carry the day. And this is a very interesting observation. Uh, interventions considered, I am a very interesting matter. Do expert opinion matter? when undertaking critical review of articles for consideration into systematic reviews. Those research designs and uh, the studies that you come across, there is something interesting called expert opinion. Does it matter when you're doing critical review? Wow. And many of you have said yes, it actually uh, it does matter, that is 60.9%, an interesting phenomena, but just hold on. There are no right or wrong answers, just you hold on. Okay, now here's another interesting. Which of the following research evidence or issues is not considered when reviewing articles for inclusion? You have your researches, both primary and secondary, and then which of them is not considered uh, when, uh, is not an issue to consider when reviewing articles for inclusion and exclusion. Systematic reviews, case studies, expert opinions, experimental designs, mixed method study designs. 
So expert opinions carry the day. It's not, uh, con it's not considered for inclusion when uh, undertaking systematic review. So there they are, and 503 of us are, uh, have responded. So this is an interesting survey, and uh, it's actually set the pace for our introduction. So I'm going to my introduction, and for those who already have the slides, um, you can kindly join me. Okay, this one. All right. Let me see how it's gonna, okay. Very well. This is a rapid uh, overview because I'm only setting the stage for the next presenter after the tea break. So for the next 40 minutes, let's talk about research methodology. And at the end of the day, within the next 40 minutes, as we leave this session, we want to see whether we, all, all the 500 of us can be able to explain what is a research process. Can we describe the various types of research designs used? Not only for uh, uh, primary studies, but also for conducting or for inclusion into um, study designs. I will take some few minutes to talk about how to critically appraise, set a stage. I'm just setting the stage of how to critically appraise a scientific article. The next session will go critic will go now into the actual details of how to appraise articles, single studies, multiple studies for inclusion. So for now, I'm going to set the template as a way of introduction. I want to take this definition from Siemens, Siemens 2020, who gives us a very interesting, but I love this definition of research. And the author said that it is any organized and systematic inquiry, keywords, organized, and then it is a systematic inquiry designed and carried out to provide information for solving a problem or answering a question or explaining a phenomenon is called research. It's organized. It's systematic. It all means that it has a methodology. And for all of us who are in the academic circles from undergraduate to postgraduate, we all know that there is a methodology that is used. It has an, intro, uh, it has an introduction section. Hey everybody. 
Can you hear me? Okay. But no sound. Awesome. Uh, we are sorry. I think we have uh, issues with Harris's network. For me, we're well, hoping that you have taken the you can be so big and you have to be training things. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello. Yes, please, we have shared an attendance form for the virtual participants. Please do well to feel it while we're waiting for Carrie to join us. Please note that uh, it's one of the criteria for getting the certificates. Thank you very much. So we'll give two minutes for that. Yeah, we are. Hi. Yeah, welcome, Caris. Uh, thank you so much. Apologies for that. It's a power blackout. Oh, good. So there's Very a good. power blackout in in your country also as a fire bath. Eh? Hello. Hi, 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 hi. There is a blackout. Okay, here also in all your right. Country. Yes. There was a power blackout here at the at Camry. We are now we are now on generator. <laughs> Africa, we held it. Hi. Oh, all right. <laughs> Matthew. Hi, Matthew. <laughs> oh, let's get back Great to the thing. session. Uh, yes, I'm enjoying you. Greeting from South Africa. Matthew. <laughs> oh, let's get back to the session. Uh, yeah, I'm enjoying the from South Africa. 
Hi. Thank you. I'm enjoying you. Carry on with the presentation. Thank you. For, let, let, me, let me start again as an introduction. So we are saying that research is any organized. There is echo. Thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you. Hello? Wow. Now, um, okay, now I think we are good to go. Let's start again. So we are saying that research is any uh, organized or system, systematic inquiry or, or designed and carried out to provide information for solving a problem. So there's a problem, answering a question or, or explaining a phenomenon. Let's start out this. Hello. Okay, here we go. Now, whenever we have research, research is that we said it's that undertaking of uh, uh, inquiry to investigate. Uh, Now, oops, sorry, there's somebody on the background. Ayak. Here are the levels of the research evidence. It's, it's actually echoes. There are echoes on the background, sorry. There are echoes on the background. Let me get the okay. So this is a it's a pyramid that uh, that is usually used, and the highest the peak shows the strongest form of evidence. So we have uh, research or these are secondary or systematic uh, reviews at the top. Although they are not quite research themselves, but they are sources of. Hi, Carice, can you hear me? Hello, Carice, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, your feedback is very clear, so you can continue, please. Okay. Uh, 
sorry, uh, sorry about that. I could I was hearing my echo on my side, but now, now it is gone. Very well. Thank you. Now, we have systematic reviews. Those are very powerful. They are right at the top. In the second session, you're going to learn why they are right at the peak. But below them, we have what we call randomized control trials. We have cohort, case studies, case series and reports. And the triangle goes on all the way to the bottom. And then we have editorials and experts' opinion. The critical take home message is this, is that the methodological differences creates the strength of evidence. When you do systematic reviews, there is a lot of rigor. There is a lot of um, uh, quality control checks. The statistical methodology are also very, uh, very high, but they are the strongest Okay, I was saying that when you look at the levels of uh, this research pyramid, I like, I like pasting that on top of this. For those who have no, uh, uh, I would like to make it simplify for our first time. When you look at research, uh, research can be categorized over time. You can do research studies over time. Um, you can look at them from strategies, methodological or appraisals. Now, right at the center is your data collection and uh, data analysis. Ideally at that point is where we have systematic reviews also coming in. Now, at the top of that should be um, longitudinal studies, which are time-based and you can see where cross-sectional studies and longitudinal studies. But in the order of hierarchy, you will start with longitudinal studies. These have studies like um, RCTs, experimental studies. And this means that you are following, these studies were following their population into the future. And therefore you are able to control for parameters. A cross-section study is a time point study taken at a certain point. And therefore, um, the researcher has no control of certain events because they have already occurred. But when you follow patients in longitudinal, uh, into the future, that's longitudinal studies, especially like clinical trials, you are able to control uh, certain parameters. You can come to uh, studies or researches that address strategies. And these ones are um, uh, researchers that are either classified as case studies, experimental studies, 
their narratives. They could be secondary or archival research or, or grounded theory surveys. So they are looking at strategies and modalities. In one of the, uh, when you go deeper, you'll be assessing outcomes. And some of the outcomes have to do with strategies. So are you doing a, it was they were doing a, a, a strategies. After that, there are other levels of research, the layers of research. You have monomethods quantitative, you have multi-method quantitative, mixed methods. And here you're interested, your strength is to do with methodological choices. That's why you're combining multiple study designs. That's why we have the mixed methods, the quantitative and other uh, related uh, designs. Uh, for building knowledge in academia, uh, we have uh, aspects of deduction, abduction, in, 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 induction, deduction. This is where you start with a theory. You build, the, you start with observation and you start building theories, what we call memo, memos. So in this one, you look at, you observe the phenomenon and then you uh, observe it, uh, take notes, and then you come up with a hypothesis. I like calling it that way. Coming up with a hypothesis or a suggestion or a statement of intent so that you will now be able to subject it to analysis. So it's theory building, um, induction. Uh, and finally, uh, part of academia, criticism, positivism is the high, uh, hierarchies of research. Most of the papers that we will be concentrating on for the next three days, they will be coming from time and strategy uh, aspects. Longitudinal, cross-sectional, mixed methods, action research, all these are some of the aspects we shall be looking, uh, looking out for. Now, the building blocks of research. In theory, any research that you will come across, whether it be opinion piece, commentary, um, uh, experimental designs, all those papers and articles that you are going to look at um, have the following uh, characteristic. This is silent, it's at the background. They are purposive and rigor. The researcher usually starts with a question or a hypothesis or a statement or an observation. So they have a focus. They want to generate new information to answer to that uh, question. All right. They, they also provide a good theoretical base. A theoretical base, meaning that they not only build on existing knowledge, but they also look at theories communication theories, if you are doing public health communication, you are looking at an um, behavioral theory, if you, are, if you are doing social science and medicine. So it's building on theory and building on existing information to bring out new information. Secondly, the methodological designs are critical. The methodological designs are critical because to allow for validity, we'll talk about later. There is testing of the various parameters, either by association, there's quantification, there's qualification, there is sorting. So a lot of testing uh, is part of the process, the building blocks of research. Any research can be replicable, replicability. Can we repeat the same research in a different setting and almost come with the same results or conclusions? So the ability to replicate, and that comes from the methodology that you have used or the ones that have been described. So these are all single, single studies. And the other building blocks, the number four, 
accuracy and precision. This is from statistics, the results, how they have been generated, the sampling. You have done your sampling procedure, you have done your uh, in qualitative uh, research, you have reached your saturation point. How have you measured? Have you applied the right statistical uh, tests? All this and the assumptions. So this is part of accuracy and precision. And because you have used sound methods, you have used accuracy uh, and statistical methods, the next thing that you're looking at will be objectivity. That means the researcher's biasness has been removed. Um, as, uh, I will not talk about biasness at this time as part of the objectivity. That will be, a less, that will be lesson number three later in the afternoon. Finally, the conclusions and the recommendations. Are they generalizable? All right. When you look at it, can we generalize? To the from the sample from the sample to the population, what are we uh, are we able to extend the meaning to other uh, populations of interests? Parsimony, which is uh, connects, but uh, this means is it simple? Uh, does it have an efficient design? Is something that somebody can read uh, correctly, and therefore research. Uh, the, the building blocks are, uh, these are salient issues. They, are not, they not only necessarily come to the front, but they are at the background. They sit at the background of any single study that is being undertaken. There are two, there are three types of research studies, three types of research studies primary research studies. These are the first hand, I, I like calling them first hand experience of the researcher, all right? So they observe the phenomenon at first hand, they collect the, prime, the data, they actually go out to the field, collect the data, analyze it and make a report. Primary research is what the researcher goes out to do and uh, they bring back, they conduct the study and they bring back uh, the data. There is secondary uh, studies or research. Normally, secondary studies, they actually interrogate primary study researches. So when you are going to do systematic reviews, this is what you are going to do. You are going to be taking single studies or multiple studies and interrogate them, go through them and present facts about the issue that you are interested in carrying out. So secondary studies are not carried out by the, um, the researcher or the, the research in this case, it's you and I, but we take what has been done before and then we summarize them and provide new meaning and insights. That is what is we are going to do for the, for the next three days. And finally, uh, especially for doctoral students and um, postdocs, there's always the theoretical or conceptual studies. So most studies here have a discussion of theory and some, if not all of them, exclusively on the construction of new theories. So this one generates new theories. That is where the emphasis, construction of new theories, rather than generating or summarizing empirical data. So theoretical conceptual studies are also pure form of a research. Um, that bring out new theory and that it is because uh, of their nature of construct. So for our, for our discussion, we will zoom in on primary and secondary studies 
but for our learning, our learning purpose, we also talk about conceptual studies. So building blocks or types of research. Whenever you take an article, whenever you take any research article, download it, look at it from, from introduction or from the abstract all the way to the end. During the research design stage, the authors of those articles or what we call them investigators, study investigators or research investigators had to think through these uh, measurements of strength. Every researcher would like to be quoted their work. Every researcher wants their work referenced somewhere. Every researcher wants to one day see their work being used by somebody. And therefore, for it to be seen, it, that research must have some form of strength. And when we talk about measures of strength, we normally have three levels. It is good to know that as you, uh, the proposals that we generate, uh, coupled with the study instruments, be they questionnaires, be they um, checklists. The, and we, there are three things that we think about. From your hypothesis, titles, specific objectives, we will want to think through what we call internal validity. And we are saying is that this research that is being conducted by James, is it uh, actually, uh, does the study intervention, is it actually causing or reaching the desired outcome? Has it reported about the desired outcome? How confident are we that the observed changes are due to the intervention or the phenomenal under the observation? So it is testing that method, that method, that questionnaire, the way you have structured that questionnaire, the questions in that questionnaire, are they really measuring what the, or what the investigators wanted to measure? All right, uh, sorry about that. There's also the ability to rule out competing explanation for observed changes. There's a levels of biasness. Are we are they able to um, uh, rule it out? One of the most difficult thing here is the issue of culture, uh, different cultures, language, the way you phrase your language. There is a pidgin English, there is a East African English, there is American English, Australian English. Do some of those words mean what they actually uh, mean? External validity. Is the study able to replicate or produce similar results in different settings? The emphasis of external validity has more to do with the methodology. And methodology includes your study design, your population, your geographical or study setting. It also contains your uh, sampling procedures, um, and it also con, uh, you know, contains your data management and so all this, uh, if another independent research or investigator comes, are they able to reproduce that study and almost find similar results? Program fidelity. This has to do with ethics. Was the study implemented according to the standards or to ethics? And most of us are required to state the uh, ethical uh, consideration. But we are going to learn in the afternoon that when you take an article, you can actually ask additional, you can actually email the original um, uh, author of that article for additional investigation is, uh, in, uh, information, especially where vulnerable populations were used. 
because you want to see how they were blinded, how they were controlled. So issues of ethics, issues of program or research fidelity is very important. It's a way of assuring us that the article that I have at hand actually answers the issues or the questions that I would like to uh, proceed. Okay. I hope I'm still on on that. I want to assume that in our reading, we have come across the word quantitative and qualitative. You will come again over and over again, quantitative, qualitative. Some have I've seen it in the uh, feedback uh, in the quiz, qualitative, quantitative, and the Okay, the two of them, Quantitative means you're, you're going to, uh, quantitative research actually has to do with quantifying. You go and measure and quantify, put them, you, you know, count. The whole idea is to count and put them in numbers. So, and this has been a very interesting area of study, putting things in numbers and plotting them in using statistical methods. So quantitative research has to do with numbers. Qualitative research, on the other hand, has more to do with open questions or statements. These are statements, and they are analyzed and put together in form of theme, themes or thematic. Any uh, researchers are now combining both of them, quantitative and qualitative uh, research. However, how do they differ? The way they analyze. Quantitative uses statistics. The quant, they use statistics. The call use thematic building. They themes, they build up themes because they want to bring out the why, the what. The way the questions are posed or asked. Most of the quantity are either yes or no. What you have just done is a quantitative, quantitative research, but in qualitative research is when you ask somebody for their experience. Tell us about your research experience. So they will give you statements. And from those statements, you start grouping them in form of themes and you build the farthest you can go is ranking. The farthest you can go is ranking. And then degree of flexibility. Uh, qualitatives are more flexible, but they have only one issue is that they cannot be replicated and get almost the similar findings over time. All right. Some, uh, you, uh, we used to say that if you ask me that question in the morning, the answer I give you, if you come two days later, I'll probably have changed the answer. There's a lot of variations with the quality. But for our reading, um, I like this format that uh, I fell in love with that really uh, research designs and qualitative. And you're also allowed to have mixed method, a combination of both. I will not go through all of them, but I want to pick key highlights. When you look at the general format, we have said the quantitative usually have, they want to confirm a hypothesis about a phenomenon. This is where you'll hear a lot of probability and sampling. While qualitative seeks to explore, to describe the phenomenal under 
observation. So one starts with an, a hypothesis, the other one, or oh, any. The second one, the qualitative seeks to explore. When it comes to analytics, because the uh, quantitatives are probabilistic based statistics, they use probabilities. While the qualitative seeks to describe, they are non, -probab uh, non probabilistic in their nature. So they describe, they explain an ex uh, relationship. They can't measure it, but they can explain. Quantitative can predict. Um, going on, uh, look at the types of questions. Quantitative can be a mixture of open and closed, but most of them are closed. Qualitative are basically open. We have, well, we have what we call the checklist. But all these uh, two style, all these two styles or methods are very important when looking for critical, uh, when you're doing critical thinking and appraising single studies or multiple studies uh, going forward. Okay, I want to stop, I want to bring you to the next level. Having looked at the research designs, Having looked at the various primary and that we, uh, the type of studies, we have known the type of studies right at the beginning. Um, our, uh, the type of studies, longitudinal studies, cross sections, are all these studies uh, or all these researches necessary for reviews are necessary in the next five minutes I want to in these 10 questions. I'm setting the stage for my next presenter shortly. But here are the 10 questions for critical appraisal of that scientific article for inclusion, for further uh, Reviews. Question number Hello, can you hear me, please? All right. Uh, sorry, Harris, you can assume he's having issues with his network. Uh, but meanwhile, please uh, be sure to fill the attendance sheets. It's really important for certification. And for the YouTube viewers, we are sorry, we're not communicating with you. Um, please check the chat box. You would see all the information that you need. Thank you. Well, we are while we're waiting for Harris. We we are going to listen to uh, a good meal message from Offer Heat, Offer Heat Manager Handy Notes. We're waiting for Harris to join us, please. Thank you.
Hello. Can you see my screen? Please can the online participants see my screen? Yes. All oh, right. Here we go again. Uh, let's 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 finish the lesson. Five more minutes and we are done. Uh, here are your critical. Let me share. I'm sharing that slide. Hmm, here are your critical questions for your critical thinking. When you look at a single study or a set of studies, ask yourself the following, um, as, as part of the appraisal, number one, is the question being discussed by the paper at hand relevant for my systematic review? Is this research that I'm holding bringing in something new? Is there any new information? The kind of questions the investigators are asking, is it of use to me? All right. Is it of use to me? Look at the study design very quickly. You look at, uh, was that study design from the best of your knowledge, just from the best of your knowledge? Uh, is that design the most ap ap appropriate to answer that question? A case study, could it have answered uh, or could, have, could it have been a better uh, 
uh, you know, at uh, Nini study design compared to uh, longitudinal? These are some of the questions that we ask ourselves. The methods described, do they address that? Uh, are they able to deliver on the objectives? So this is more a critical review of a paper going forward. And then um, the last aspects are usually add-ons, number six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, they are add-ons, uh, you know, about hypotheses, but it was original uh, protocol, statistical analysis conducted properly, uh, the conclusions, are they justified from the data? Uh, or rather what, what uh, you know, what uh, reviewers say, your conclusions should be supported by the data that you have. And if there's any conflict of interest. Uh, the, my closing remarks are this. Consider also the following, the completeness of the literature presented. There are times when people, uh, some uh, articles just present the problem statement as part of the introduction and then the questions and then they go ahead and analyze. So is there some missing or critical information that is missing? You can request, you can email the author for additional information. Sometimes we ask ourselves, how unique is this article? Is it, uh, you know, is it bringing something in you? One example is when, if you start talking about COVID-19 and, uh, uh, you know, pub, uh, community health interventions, because of the amount of literature, if you get a new, a new one now, a new article on COVID, you'll be asking yourself, what is this, or is there anything new that this COVID-19 and community health strategies is presenting? So the uniqueness of the research article or publication that you're looking at is critical. Timing, uh, timeliness. I don't think you would want to look at an article for 1995 because we normally say that there's a lot of new information that is being generated about any discipline at any given time. So is it timely, is it current? And how far back can you go? For your systematic reviews, you, you're likely to go back 10 years, five to 10 years back because it is assumed that those authors in those 10 years are building on the knowledge of the articles uh, that were before or that were in the earlier years. So it's a buildup of knowledge. And therefore you want to see, you want the current um, knowledge, the depth of the knowledge presented. There are times when uh, you can imagine an economist trying to present a uh, new knowledge on say a health economist producing new knowledge, say on um, or Shigella or Ectobacter and other related micro microbials or pathogenic microbials uh, in a lab setting. So you, although they are trying to bring in the issue of costs, but you can tell the knowledge that this is really uh, By the way, colleagues, that last point usually comes up when you'll be looking at um, uh, li uh, literature that was published in peer reviewed journal and literature published in uh, uh, they call them predator journals. I will leave to Professor Allison to tell us about predator journals, all right? Journals that you can publish overnight and your paper is published. So coverage of death is, will be critical when you look at those. Allow me to end at this point and I leave you on the screen for you to look at those three takeaway points. Research designs are an important component for any single or multiple study. 
Study designs are prone to uh, preference of the investigators. And finally, uh, there are other factors. When you look at a single research, there are other factors uh, to look at and they've been listed there uh, for you. So let me stop here and I want to uh, give it back to my host to see whether we can have a quick one or two uh, Q and A session. Asante Nissan and apologies for the um, apologies for the technology uh, ups and down. Thank you and over to uh, to our my host. Okay. Any question? Sorry, I, I think I was muted when I was speaking away. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, awesome, thank you. So we have like 10 minutes for Q and A. And after that, we'll be uh, doing the exercise. And the exercise will be uh, critiquing a, a, a research article. Uh, but before the exercise, I think Prof. Allison will go for tea break. Prof. Allison, before the exercise, we'll go for tea break first. Is it ready? Yes, it's OK, ready. thank you. So before the exercise, which is on critiquing a research article, We'll do a tea break, but for now, we take a uh, question and answer for 10 minutes. Thank you. Anybody virtual or physical participants? Oh. All right, Dr. Karis, we have somebody here. Thank you, Doctor, for the insightful. All right. Yeah, my name is Abdul Arusans. I'm a PhD candidate. I do research in infectious diseases. I'm interested in reading further from Sanders et al. 2016. I'm trying to search Google Scholar and other yeah. sources. Can you kindly share a link to that publication? I'm glad. Thank you. Hello. Harris, did you get the question, please? Please, those uh, joining us virtually. Okay, we have one question. And uh, the question is coming from Abel. Can you hear me, please, Caris? Uh, no, 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 it's so unstable. Ah, okay. Somebody says, explain more on the web of design in your slide, and that's from Fulashade. And another question says, how many types of study designs do we have in systematic reviews? Thank you. How many studies? Uh, good. How many types of study designs do we have in a systematic review? All right. Systematic reviews is, an, uh, is a methodology of appraising uh, researches. So look at it at the bigger point. It's for appraising research. And one of the entry levels is to look at the study designs. So all the study designs can be included. We can do a, we can do a systematic review because these are review of publications, secondary review of very many papers. More than, you could, there'll be more than 50 or 60 or 100. So you will be looking at them and teasing out the design. So what I can say is that um, systematic reviews uh, encompasses all, this, all the study designs. 
That's number one. They encompasses all the study designs. It depends on the question you're looking at and what you want to do. You can do a plain summary in which qualitative and quantitative study designs are included. You can do one on clinical studies in which the quantitative, and that is the cross-sectional part of the mixed method or RCTs are part of it. So uh, we, uh, we will talk about more of that uh, when we go in the next session of systematic reviews. This was basically, this session which I've just conducted was just laying the foundation of what is research process. Um, I, uh, I want to leave it there because that is technology. Uh, is there another one that I could answer to as I, I want to send a, I want to send a, a paper for you to critically to look at. Okay. Yes. Uh, I think we can just take one more question. Yes. Is, is that okay, please? Yes, go ahead. All right, thank you. This question is from Alan Okulo. And the person says, thank you so much. Must we necessarily have time period limits for papers to include in our systematic reviews? What if we include papers with no time limits from as far back as the first published paper, especially if no systematic review on the topic exists? Is this acceptable? <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. First and foremost, <laughs> there, are review, uh, there are quite a number of uh, reviews. Not, they are not necessarily systematic. There could be some rapid reviews, but they are still part of the uh, systematic review. And therefore, uh, there is, uh, you'll always find that how back the time period basically depends on your subject matter. What are you, the question that you're looking at or the issue that you're looking at? If you, let me give you an example. If you're looking uh, in cases to do with cancers, the types of cancer or coping mechanism, there's a lot of studies on cancer. Um, and therefore, probably you look in the last three to four years. If you are looking at the use of uh, maternal placenta to be used for the recon, uh, you know, for reconstructive of the of the eye, the retina, and uh, you know, the use of that placenta, which by you know, it is said it can be used for reconstructive. Um, Optophthalmologists in the house will know about that. There is very very thin literature about the use of uh, placentas at, uh, you know, harvested at birth, childbirth, and their use in um, and the eye surgery to, uh, you know, correct blindness. Now that one, you will need to go back, even or probably in the year 1980s to see how organ, uh, you know, manipulation of organs to uh, repair other parts of the body including organ harvesting. So each study is so unique and the time span will depend on the question you hand up at hand. But 10 years is good enough. Thank you, over. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Karis, and thank you everybody. We'll take a 15 minutes break, but yes, we have uh, acknowledged the questions in the chat box especially concerning the registration link. And we, we are going to address that before, before the next session or before tomorrow. And then for the many other questions that are coming in, we are going to share a link to our WhatsApp platform. We, we are having issues with the Telegram. That's the second one we have created for this workshop where it keeps getting deleted. So we'd rather work with WhatsApp. So please, you could uh, post your questions there. Or Karis, please, uh, are you comfortable with dropping your email so the participant can uh, message you directly? Okay, I can do that right now. Awesome, thank you. So you could message Karis directly with your questions 
or if you're in a WhatsApp group, you could join. We are about sharing the links very soon. And the slides, we have shared them already, but we'll still share them again. Thank you very much. We'll take a 15 minutes break now.